this session talks about maximum likelihood estimation or ML estimation as written as title of this slide. So let's define, uh, if you remember, let's define P as the probability of observing whatever value of Y was actually observed for a given observation. Okay. So we have the probability of Y equal to one given a, a X vector that is uh, a set of values uh, for predictors. Uh, for a single other observation. And uh, that is that corresponds to the probability y equal to one <clears throat> observed. And then we also have a uh, probability uh, that is y i equal to zero. Uh, uh, since um, observation either has one or zero for its y, uh, and uh, if the probability for y equal to one is uh, this number, then the probability of y equal to zero is one minus that probability because of the complement rule of probability, right? Two probabilities uh, exhaust uh, all possibilities of an outcome. Then adding together the two probabilities, uh, the outcome should be one. And uh, if the observations are independent, then we can multiply through all the probabilities, individual probabilities, right? The probability for each individual case, either equal to one or equal to zero. And if you remember last time, we derived this likelihood, right? Is a product of these individual probabilities. Okay, and we can combine equations. <clears throat> for the probability of y equal to one and y equal to zero, right? If observed y is one, then that term gonna come here. If the observed y is equal to zero, then uh, that probability, that is one minus the probability of y equal to one, uh, given x enters here. Regardless, okay, uh, likelihood is simply a product of individual probabilities for either y uh, being one or zero, okay? And here this uh, capital letter in Greek uh, looks like a big pi, right? Capital letter pi, and it is the capital letter for pi uh, denotes uh, multiplication, okay? A product of something that is, uh, a series of multiplications. And the betas are incorporated by noting that uh, the probability y equal to one given x is uh, this generic cumulative density function. Here, I wanna take a detour uh, to bring you to uh, the point uh, when I uh, went over uh, the relationship between uh, y, y star, and x beta. Uh, if you recall, the probability of y equal to one is equal to the probability of epsilon uh, smarter equal to x beta, right? Because y equal to one, the probability of y equal to one, is equivalent of the probability y star, the latent unobserved uh, y, y star, uh, greater equal to zero. And y star is equal to x beta plus epsilon, greater equal to zero. When that equation holds, then y equal to one, right? If you remember how uh, we, uh, begin with the y star and the observed y, right? And uh, this is a cumulative density function, a cumulative density function. Then next question would be, well, what is that cumulative density function? Because once we figure out the cumulative density function, this likelihood is, or the probability, roughly the probability of observing the data is equal to what? The product 
of a series of this probability. Uh, to be very precise, probability density function. So this is from I from one to N, right? Right? Okay. And uh, we need to express this likelihood as a function of X beta, but, but we got to figure out what is that cumulative density function? Well, uh, in this case, we have to make assumptions. We have to make assumptions. First, we would assume the error term follows a normal distribution. So a normal distribution with mean of mu and uh, variance sigma square looks like that. Okay, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting and complicated uh, mathematical expression. And with a shorthand, we can express a, uh, a you know, a, a, a normally distributed random variable like that. Okay. So that, this is the shorthand for this very complicated expression. Expression, and uh, and so this is kind of a, a normal, any kind of normal with mean, mu, and variance sigma square. But we have a special kind of normal distribution with its mean mu equal to zero and variance sigma square equal to one, okay. right? So this mu becomes zero and sigma becomes one. When these values are plugged in, then the standard normal becomes this, right? The one disappears and, uh, excuse me, uh, the, the mean of zero disappears, right? Because X minus zero is X. And sigma square also uh, absorbed by you know, usually the constant multiplied by sigma because sigma is equal to one. And then we use that short notation. X uh, is distributed standard normal. So that's called standard normal. Now this is standard normal distribution. And then we have its cumulative density function, which we will use for F, if you remember, in the last slide. Right, so this is an integral. This is an integral, and uh, it is expressed as phi, capital letter phi in Greek. So uh, the product of of um, of uh, individual probabilities, a series of individual probabilities, uh, in the last slide, is a generic cumulative density function. If we assume the error term follows normal distribution, then that F becomes this, okay? So this is how a normal distribution looks like. Uh, in the first is uh, probability density function, and the second graph is the cumulative density function for a normal distribution, for a normal distribution. And if, if in the middle, uh, mu is equal to zero and the standard deviation sigma is one, that becomes standard normal. And uh, what is used, it's called the standard logistic distribution. So this one is called standardized logistic. Logistic. This is called the standard logistic distribution. Is mean equal to zero and sigma square is pi square over three. And if, if the error terms follows this distribution, that is standard logistic distribution, then we will have a PDF like that. More importantly, we will have a cumulative density function. It's called lambda, right? Lambda. So this is lowercase lambda in Greek, and this is uppercase lambda in Greek. Looks like that. And, uh, and this is a very uh, beautiful uh, cumulative density function with very nice features. So when error term uh, is assumed to follow a standard logis logistic distribution, then the f x beta is going to follow this form, going to follow this form. So it really depends on the consumptions we make about the distribution of the error term. Of course, of course. Uh, so this is how we express, you know, the distribution in shorthand notation. Um, and uh, Well, so this first graph uh, presents 
uh, how the three different kinds of distributions look like. So the solid line is normal, right? And for the standardized, it's pretty close to the uh, normal, right? Uh, actually, the standard normal. And uh, we have uh, standard logistic distribution. And this is cumulative density function. How, uh, if we graph how these three different uh, graphs look like. Um, so if the probability that y equal to one for probit, the probability y equal to one, we have this form. And for logit, then the probability y equal to one follows that form, right? And uh, when error term follows a uh, standard normal distribution, we have probit. When error term follows a standard logistic distribution, we have logit. Uh, in addition to uh, the probit and logit models, if we assume um, the error term follows complementary lock lock uh, distribution, uh, then we have what is called the C lock lock model. And for C lock lock model, then um, the probability for y equal to one uh, looks, looks like that. And C lock lock is, is in general uh, not a symmetric distribution. So unlike a standard normal or standard logistic distribution, which are what? Symmetric distributions. So the C lock lock uh, model does not follow that uh, property of, of symmetry. So uh, let me uh, repeat. Let me repeat some of the major uh, results. Uh, when the betas are incorporated like that, okay, right? We get this result. Then from here, we can get the likelihood uh, looks like that, right? The product of probability uh, for y equal to one and multiply again by series of, of product uh, of uh, the probability of y equal to zero, right? Depending on whether y equal to one or y equal to zero. If y equal to one that enters here, y equal to zero enters here. But really it doesn't matter, okay? Uh, log likelihood is simply a series of, um, of individual probabilities multiplied through, depending upon whether y equal to one or y equal to zero. And for logic, right? the probability, uh, the likelihood looks like this. So it is a probability, it is a product of probability, a series of probability for y equal to one and multiplied by the product of a series of probabilities y equal to zero. And you can derive when, you know, the probability y equal to one follows this formulation, then the probability y equal to zero should follow that formulation, right? And you can do something like one minus this term. You should get this term, the term on the right. Uh, for probit model, the likelihood uh, follows uh, this formulation. So on the left hand, excuse me, um, on the left, we have probability of y equal to one, right? This phi. And uh, on the right, also a product of series of individual probabilities y equal to zero, right? Because if the probability y equal to one is, is, is this result, then the probability of y equal to zero should be one minus five. 